right. Cousin, good Patrick. evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to Thursday, May 2nd, 2024 Planning Board meeting. Uh, if we could all raise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, introduction to board members. To my far left, we have Don Gianarelli, Paul Amatucci, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, Rick Rains, Les Bodwell, and on Zoom, Jerry Graybill. We also have the town manager, James Bellissimo. All right. First up is the public hearing, McKenzie Minor Subdivision, Final Plan, Diamond Hill Road, R29, Lot 16, R40, Lot 10A, Zone R2. Good evening. Uh, my name is Austin Fagan. I'm here representing the applicant, Dave Springer. Uh, just give a quick overview before the public hearing opens. Uh, this is a proposed four lot cluster subdivision off of Diamond Hill Road. It is a pot, uh, paved private roadway. There is existing overhead power that runs from Diamond Hill Road to the uh, property line. From that, we will be extending underground power. Uh, there, the lots will be served by private wells and septic systems. And uh, the last thing that we're waiting on at the previous meeting was permitting through the DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, we've received our DEP permits, but we are still waiting. Um, the Army Corps, based on IFNW comments, has requested a botanical study uh, that can be completed next month. So we are uh, waiting for that to be completed. Um, but if the board would you know, want to grant a conditional approval based on that, we'd be happy to take it. And uh, other than that, it's a pretty straightforward project. Be happy to answer any questions the board or the public may have. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if anyone wants to come up, just state your name, address, and your concerns are just. With I'm, I'm Gary. Good evening. Um, I live at 342 Diamond Hill. So I'm in a butter to the McKenzie project. The right of way crosses the front of my home. I'm here to request a privacy hedge. Um, I talked to McKenzie Project, and so he knows why I'm here, and it would uh, affect us greatly if we didn't have it, because we have a big picture window with an open concept, and those cars and trucks would be coming right by our front window. So um, I suggest that we, you know, put a hedge, hedge row in, and yeah, that's why I'm here. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. I'll second the motion. Okay, no further discussion. All in favor, we're gonna have to do a roll call because Jerry's uh, on Zoom. So, Don? Okay, good. Yes. Okay. yes. Paul? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? I'm a yes. Yes. Rick? Yes. Les? Jerry? Yes. All right. Public hearing is now closed. Next is public hearing for Berwick Police Department parking lot expansion U004-142-1 zone BC slash I. Open up the public hearing. Give a brief description of the project. Or? <clears throat> yeah, I can give a brief uh, description. So the um, the project for the expansion is to expand the parking lot, um, the side of the police station. Uh, also, one of the main functions is to add a uh, fenced-in area for impounded vehicles. We found that. Um, some of the impounds have been very expensive. Sometimes the costs are, you know, approaching more than what the, co the car's worth. So it leaves the potential for a liability to the town. Um, if the cars are being held, um, it just kind of puts us in a tough situation. So it adds a handful of parking spots for the police department. 
which is needed during peak times and adds that uh, impound area. Okay. Did I miss anything? Could I just ask a question about uh, the impound, impounded vehicles? So you're saying, like, I know typically if a car gets uh, towed and it gets impounded, it goes to the tow yard typically, right? And they charge, you know, exorbitant rates. She's saying in certain cases you'd impound a vehicle and keep it at the police station so the potential uh, person may not incur those charges? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Does this affect the community garden at all, or is it... I think it, these okay. projects kind of came in around the same time so a lot of the um you know chief town and dennis and rita kind of they, they fit together i mean they're kind of like puzzle pieces are they agreeable to and, and i'm hoping we're getting a little more offset for the police department giving them more real estate or or is that not the case um nothing is changing from the initial um <clears throat> It, I mean, I think they have, they designed the space to have enough space that they need. And that project's well underway. Yeah. 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 And as I recall, there was a there was also going to be created a buffer between the garden and the sim pound area, so that correct that, that could. Yeah. I think that yeah. was the the fence, right? The idea of the fence was more going to be higher yeah. to yeah. the police department. All right. All right, well, if anyone has any questions or comments, just come up, state your name, address, and questions or concerns. No? All right, I'll make a motion that we close this public hearing. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion. Roll call vote. Don? Yes. Paul? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? Yes. 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 Jerry? Yes. All right, public hearing is now closed. Um, first public comment. My name is Pat Bovere from Six Country Lane. I had this nice in beginning because I thought you were going to be here till 10 o'clock because of two public hearings. <laughs> <laughs> I always have, good evening, hard working planning board volunteers. I appreciate that. I am here tonight to talk to you, the planning board, about making decisions that will affect the future of our town, our Berwick. This is concerning the gas station. According to our land use ordinance, the planning board has many regulations to uphold that guide the development of projects. I believe you do cover these performance standards one by one to be sure the applicant has complied with them. Some are very specific and can easily be checked off as being met. Others, like 9.1 I1M, are more general but certainly as important and even more complex than many of the others. This standard states the project will not result in water pollution. Now we have all received letters from esteemed water authorities and studies, Wright Pierce Engineering Hydrological, Hydrogeological Study, the Maine Department of Health and Human Services Environmental Hydrogeologist, the EPA Region 1 Source Water Protection. If you read each one of these, their conclusions are the same. Wright Pierce states, avoid construction of new facilities along Route 4 corridor that have significant potential to contaminate groundwater. The DHHS says, Significant concern about future contamination of drinking water sources from the proposed gas station facility. The EPA concurs with the DHHS and suggests siting gas suggests siting the gas station in very close proximity to a municipal well field directly conflicts with EPA source water protection program. All of this is summarized in the South Berwick thing that you all got. I got that night also. 
I believe that if the planning board had received these letters of severe concern before the gas station application was submitted, that each one of you would have agreed that nothing should jeopardize the integrity of our drinking water. According to the Maine Land Use Law Booklet, the purpose of the land use regulations in the state is to incorporate regional considerations into local planning and decision making so as to ensure consideration of regional needs and the regional impact of development. This is chapter 187, section 4312D. Obviously, the state is expecting towns to work together to safeguard our water resources that cross town lines. We are not doing what South Berwick tells us to do, which I heard a comment made here the last meeting. Um, but a much larger and significant issue than the gas station is that of preserving the safety of drinking water aquifer that affects both South Berwick and Berwick. According to the preamble of the land use ordinance in Berwick, which you all have, Article 1 is the very first page, um, the purpose of our land use ordinance is to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the residents of the town, to encourage the most appropriate use of land throughout the municipality, many other things. Um, also, to conserve our natural resources and to prevent and control water pollution. Nowhere is the purpose of the land use ordinance to satisfy a developer's needs or to be concerned with a developer's financial investment in a project. I am asking the planning board to follow the purpose of the land use ordinance and deny the gas station application because of an incalculable risk to Berwick's future water resources. We have all gotten to know Mr. Patel, his good business reputation, and his desire to do anything for the project to reach fruition. This, however, does not change the facts, the evidence, that a gas station this close to drinking water wellheads could lead to regional contamination of water and financial liability to the town for not heeding the warning of the appropriate authorities. Uh, thank you for listening to my point of view and according to a quote used at the American Legion Berwick Citizenship Dinner, citizenship is the chance to make a difference to the place where you belong. And I hope you all sincerely look to the future of that and not just consider a single project. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks, Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, close this public comment. Next is approval of minutes for April 18, 2024. I find that the minutes do not accurately depict uh, the content of the meeting. There were several omissions. Um, I also find that uh, there were parts of my dialogue which were cherry picked and directly quoted in here out of context. Those words are indeed my words. However, um, without context, uh, they're grossly inappropriate. I did send an email yesterday in hopes that that would be rectified before today, and it has not been. So uh, I would request that we have the minutes amended to accurately reflect the discussion as it pertained to the project in question. Uh, the items that were omitted regarding the coordination between the two towns water districts and the developer uh, among uh, uh, several other instances within that three-hour meeting which were omitted from the minutes uh, it's inappropriate uh, it almost comes across as we're, we're unwilling to be transparent and I think with something this important uh, we need to have transparency and 
if we're watching the video to create the minutes, why are we why are we leaving things out that are inconvenient to hear? And just to jump on that, do, can I? Yes, sir. Please you? do. Uh, yeah, I. Aside from um, you know your comments, which I agree with, there's a lot of feedback from the applicant on the stop and go that he committed to certain things or did not commit to certain things. And I would like the, that in the minutes. I'd really like to see that. I was disappointed in not seeing, seeing those things. For instance, we talked about water sampling. And uh, at, at the beginning, you tell me what you want for water sampling and we will do it. And then when he got up towards the end, it was, oh, quarterly is just way too much and it's, we don't know how much it's going to cost and uh, we'll have to get back to you on that. Uh, so so th I think that what was committed to and what wasn't committed to uh, should be in those minutes too because I think this is an important subject and uh, I think those minutes in particular really really need to reflect everything that was said. Uh, uh, not word for word but cat in, in categories. Yeah, because I understood that the two water districts, ours, Main Water, and mm -hmm. Berwick's, South Berwick, were going to get together to come up with a plan. No. That is That is incorrect. That was it's what I South understood Berwick as well. Water District I, and the engineers to the developers that were going oh, to Oh, not Main Water? That is correct. Oh, I, I thought, thought they said water was I, part of Main Water as I well. Pretty yeah, Main Water. Main Water. I'm yeah. pretty oh, certain that this, both water districts yes. agreed to yeah. work in conjunction. That was my recollection. Yeah, so, that is South, not, that is South, not Berwick, South Berwick Water has a relationship with Main Water, right. and Wright Pierce is the engineer for both Main Water and South Berwick, so it makes, yeah, it revolved around yeah, monitoring and Yes. So it begs the question, why the omission? Is it a clerical oversight or is it, is there an agenda being driven? I'm not, again, not making accusations. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking the difficult question because this is a very, uh, I think these are written with rose colored glasses um, and they omitted a lot of difficult topics. Um, we're here to do the, the business of the town and, it, and that business can be messy uh, it can be difficult, but if you're not willing to come to the table and have an honest discussion and accurately record <coughs> the concerns of the townspeople and the concerns of the board, then what are we doing here as a board? So with the minutes, um, I know Lee J has had some talks and communication with Terry and a couple of the people about what is really needed for the minutes. And he's basically said, you want to keep them short, sweet, and the only major Thing is you want to cover all the motions, the votes, and stuff like that. Um, other that's, than that's that, what we're actually going to ask that. Thanks for answering that. That is the majority of the minutes. Yeah, and the, this is the amendment process. You can put in. Yeah. This is the this is the time. I mean, I think one thing is that um, one the meeting did the last half hour that covered some of that was cut off because it was programmed for three hours. So like the last part just wasn't recorded. But like, yeah, we should, we should, and that's, we we had a couple of things. There was just a discussion about the water getting together. And the second part was um, asking for information about the petroleum expert, about the, the system. So those things can be added to the minutes. And also the piece about the main regulations what Mr. Graybill uh, provided to the developer, that, that was also curiously absent. Um, the the bigger piece is if you are going to quote my words, I would ask that you quote them in their entirety because to cherry pick these uh, phrases which you have directly quoted me as, it, it's grossly inappropriate and it's out of context. So I would ask that you either quote my statements in their entirety or not at all. Well, because it is grossly inappropriate. Yeah, just, just you know, following up with that, Phil, I think uh, probably what that section should have instead of quotations and that sort of thing is that some concerns were brought up about the process and uh, and presented to the board and the public at the meeting by Phil Roy. Uh, I think that would be uh, 
adequate unless you just want to go into he said this and this and this and this and this which and sounds and like you all don't want to do no i think negative. so I, I would like to just i'm sorry go ahead. I, I would like to you know no i think we, we go one way or the other but we can rec any. recognize that the fact that we have a video backup so the minutes is a breadcrumbs that you have your the core things we're required to have and then you're always yeah thank you and, and that's why you I'm don't need to be that specific James, that you know these issues were brought up <coughs> and you know discussed and they are on the video so, so, so which is so really curious, yeah. the curious yeah. part though is statements i made were cherry picked from my full statement and they are recorded here out of context and recorded out of context it, it quite frankly makes me sound like a jerk um, I would encourage you to proceed very carefully with regard to how you quote people because you're, you're opening yourself up for libel. It's, it's not appropriate to misquote. So I would ask that you either remove the quotes or quote it in its entirety. Well, he's I, not the one that removes it. Right. Well, it, he is the it, town manager. Right. <clears throat> but in the process of minutes, mm -hmm. we amend it. If we don't, if we see something that's not right with it, we mm -hmm. amend it. So this okay. is, if we either accept it or amend it, accept it as amended, so this I would, is our procedure for I, it. I would like to point out, <clears throat> it's interesting to me that um, in the same paragraph that Phil's quotes were in at the top, it talks about some discussions that were had, and it summarizes by saying video is available for review online. And if the video is available for review, then as we've been talking about, I don't think it's important to have specifics such as what is then followed in that paragraph. So I guess what I would like to do is make a motion to strike all of Phil's comments from these minutes. Um, if we're going to say video is available for review online, it should cover... Um, everything that isn't the bare bones necessary parts for the minutes. Yeah, I don't and, I, and I would be amenable to, if if you're going to quote me, quote my words in their entirety. I, and I'm I'm perfectly fine with that if you want to have it for the record, but do not quote portions. small windows and portions to paint a picture and drive an agenda because that is how that document comes across. It is very one sided. And I think we can all agree on that. Well, I'll agree that you, how it, how you said it last meeting, it did seem one-sided. You you made observations about stuff, mm -hmm. and you didn't back it up with facts. You just claim stuff, and that I mean, to me, I read it, and it's it's pretty much right. There's only a, okay. Should we take a roll call vote? Well, here well, he has a motion. I have a motion to I'll strike second. the entire conversation from the minutes. I'll second, and I I will abstain. Out of, you know, well, trying to be exceptionally I don't, reasonable. If we could have a little discussion about that, because I, I don't agree with striking that entire paragraph out of the record. Um, well, it I says right there the attorney said it was inappropriate for the meeting. So I don't know why it's put into the minutes if the attorney says it's not appropriate. Because it's a breadcrumb to watch the video. So it's, well, it's, it it's says, a, a, like a, like a, you know, when you open a book, right, and you have the contents page. Mm -hmm. It's a contents page, and you know, I, I think that the for me, my opinion is there's somewhere in between there that makes sense. That maybe you know, I, I don't, I don't disagree that, that that what this says is relatively accurate to what I heard at the meeting, but it wasn't all that we heard. So that's where the you know, because you did say these things, and these things I, I don't know, deny that I said them, but they are not I, contextually. I, I heard what you said, and I I don't. I think that they are contextually ac accurate from what I saw. So I, I, I don't think striking them from the minutes is appropriate. I went Maybe back cleaning and, them up a little bit. I went back and watched the video earlier tonight, and the conversation that we're talking about that Phil essentially carried was over 20 minutes long. And we have four quotes in here. So there is a lot missing. And nowhere in the minutes does it say we need to put a table of contents and breadcrumbs for people to go watch the video. It's a public video, just like people are invited to come here to the meeting to speak, they're invited to go watch the video on their own. We don't need to lead them there. Why would we have minutes then? The minutes are for roll call or for votes and motions and approvals and things like that. And, and, and items summaries. we discussed. Yeah. Well, that is not an accurate summary, sir. All right, so how are we amending it? 
I would, we I would a make a motion. We have a motion and we have a second. A motion already. that we're not going that, that we're we are going to have a bare bones kind of like. No, the motion was for for what Rick said was strike to strike it out. Correct. So there was a second. You seconded. Yeah, correct? I did. So we have discussion. So now roll call vote. So Don strike it. Yes. Paul strike it. Okay, I'm a no. I will abstain. I'm a yes. No. Okay, Jerry. I'm a yes. Okay. Well, then it's struck. Thank you. Still needs to get accepted. Though. Yeah, I was just saying. <laughs> well, like, should we not see a draft before we vote on it? I mean, it, well, I think we're still missing. Well, and we're missing. Well, we're missing a, quite a bit of content. Well, you, you pointed out. Do you want content or not? Because you just voted to strike it. We well, stroke Phil's conversation, but there is content. Like I specifically asked for uh, specs on the exact system that they're going to use, and he said that he would provide them to me. And nowhere in here does it say any of that or any of what Paul talked about um, with the two water districts talking, it just isn't there. Is that typically in the minutes? I'm, and I'm asking a legitimate question. Is that typically in the minutes or is it in the minutes when we agree that that's what you're going to do? We, they were, if I recall correctly, they were proposed conditions and we were discussing with the applicant what he would be amenable to do. Um, those were not put in there and I think they're very uh, germane to the conversation at hand, and and they should be captured. This is a not, very if they're not sure, most conditions are put in on the minutes. That, that's my only question. Yeah. Is you know is that normal to put those all those notes that all the conversations we have and all those things that that we don't make conditions. I mean, if we make it a condition, I can see it should be in the minutes. And from a staff perspective, you, we'll we'll capture what the board wants to do. I mean, just tell yeah. us. Cause I mean, if we all we have to do is amend it to say that we need those conditions in the in the in the in the minutes. Would it be a reasonable yeah, ask so. if we were to make a motion to have the minutes reconstructed to be an accurate depiction of the minutes and and the discussions we had with regard to that applicant, specifically the conditions uh, which we asked for. The uh, documents that Mr. Grable provided with regard to the, the uh, state requirements, all of that stuff is absent. And it's very germane and it's very, it, this is a very contentious project. And, and I don't understand our, our, our willingness to provide a lack of transparency. It, it begs the question why. There's, there's no lack of transparency. Yeah. We're very transparent. There's, I don't think that's the right phrase for that I, I statement. I understand what you're saying. Sir. I politely disagree, sir. <clears throat> I think we're on TV, so we're pretty transparent. We're discussing everything on TV. Um, that's pretty transparent to me. But, you know, my question is, you know, are we going to put in the minutes everything that we suggest that doesn't become part of the plan? That's really the, the, the crux of the question, right? So, you know, um, Jerry talked about some uh, information, right? And yeah, the state regulations. State regulations. Does that become part of the plan, or is that in the... You know, when we wrote the gas station ordinances, you know, we talked about not becoming petroleum engineers and leaving the experts to do their job, meaning the DEP and the state and federal regulations. So, you know, I appreciate that, and we all want to protect our water system, our drinking system, for sure. But if one of us suggests something that doesn't become part of the plan, does that need to be in the minutes? But it hasn't been decided yet whether it's going to become part of the plan or not because we're not there yet. And so if it does, then it goes in the minutes, right? We, but we agreed then, as a board that Well, no, it should go in the minutes because we discussed it. And it was germane to the subject. Okay. I, and yeah, that's what I'm that, asking. I'm I, trying to get... No, th that's the difference of opinion we have. I think that, you know... Uh, I didn't I let, express an opinion one way or another. I was asking. As far as, uh, particularly on this, this project which has a lot of viewpoints and there are a lot of people here i think more is better concerning what we asked them to do what they can they said they would do and a lot of the information that surrounded uh that conversation that i think would be very helpful in the minutes that's fair it's my opinion yeah. that was a question i just i yeah. was trying to get clarity on that what should be in the minutes and what shouldn't be, you know? Yeah, Maybe we'll be. we need to look at that. Well, and so, 
Jerry's comments. Jerry's comments. The agreement between the hold two on, hold on. about sorry, sorry. state regulations. Is that correct, Jerry? Yes. Okay. There's, there was two right. Yeah. The, the fuel station and the, the 24 hour fuel station uh, right. requirements. Okay. Just to see how they were going to handle that right. and let the town know, you know, what it was they were going to do for each yeah. one of the conditions yeah. that were posed. How they were going to regulate us. Okay. So there's that. Then there's the town the agreement water the two towns. and South Berwick water. They were going to work together uh, to develop a list of best practices, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. That was the correct the driving force for that, and that is also not captured in the minutes. We also sent it back to police and fire for a, uh, another review based on the changes that were in the plan. Yeah, as far as I know, they haven't responded back. Okay. Um, next was Rick's... Details of equipment being Details. used. Um, all right, well, I'll make a motion that we amend the minutes to add Jerry's comments about the state requirements for fueling stations, the town water and South Berwick water. Um, what was that? The uh, water collaboration, water collaboration water. of uh, conditions, and then Rick's details of equipment being used. Yeah. Okay. For under yeah, for underground storage tanks. For underground storage, yeah. It, all it all it just has to do is just add yeah. that to the minutes. Sure. Just adding that stuff to oh, the minutes. Yeah, the, thing, the couple other things that are missing, Mike, too, is okay. the comments from Mr. Patel to, of the things that he agreed to do with the water testing and stuff like that. But those were curiously absent as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the comments from Mr. Patel yes. regarding water test or the water testing and periodicity. Yeah, of frequency of water testing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I spoke to somebody about that. You know, again, I'm not a petroleum engineer, but they were saying that you know typically um, the water testing is done quarterly for the first year or two to determine the flow, the direction of the flow of the water, and then from there it could be annually or whatever the frequency. Which is kind of what we were discussing. Was, yeah, no, it was, seemed like you know, he was start, okay start with, with the, a lot of the town water tests and, and, and testing. And that was, he was okay with the town water test. So yes. we'll just add that to the minutes. Um, so my amendment to the minutes is Jerry's comments about state requirements, the town water and South Berwick water district conditions, Rick's details of equipment and comments of Mr. Patel with the water testing. And strike the paragraph. That's already they already okay. did that. So that just looking for a second. I will second. Okay. For the discussion. Roll call. Don. Yes. Paul. Yes. I'm a yes. Phil. I'm a yes. Rick. Yes. Les. Yes. Jerry. Yes. All right. There we go. It's approved as amended. All right. We're missing old business in the agenda. Just it's online. Oh, is it? It is. I must have an old one. Under approval of minutes, it is in there, sir. Well, it's there, but there's nothing in it. Oh. But it it goes back to the yeah McKenzie yeah. Just so old business McKenzie minor subdivision final plan Diamond Hill Road R29 lot 16 R40 lot 10A zone R2. Good evening, <laughs> Austin Fagan again. So I can share they've received a DEP, NERPA, and stormwater permit by rule, and we have three conditions of approval. Number one and two are straight from the subdivision regulations dealing with performance guarantee and third-party construction inspection. I know Terry was asking about um, the, the, the value of the construction, which was on the application. 
for three hundred thousand dollars for the road roadway and um, utilities, which I would recommend to accept that amount. And then the escrow set at six percent of that, so that's where that eighteen thousand comes from. Um, and as requested, um, a condition of approval for your consideration is uh, the Army Corps and IFNW approvals um, as a condition of approval. And of course, if anything changes as a result of the study, you'll have to come back anyway. Okay. And then it was just one question about the request of privacy hedge road and frontage of the road. If the board sees fit, you know, I, I can uh, bring that to the applicant. I don't think it's a, a huge problem, but um, look for more comment on if you think would that's it, Would required. it be a reasonable compromise to ask the developer to put in the hedge with the understanding that the abutter who's requesting it would maintain? I yeah. think that is very reasonable for both parties involved. Happy to bring that up to the uh, the applicant. Can, I, I don't want to speak on his behalf, correct. but I think that Just is reasonable. Just throwing spitballing ideas to see what's in the realm of possibility. Can you show us um, where, do you know where the proposed hedge is, what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. Because a hedge is not going to give any amount of privacy. Uh, so based on the conversation that we had. Uh, you got to speak in the mic. Sorry about it's that. It's okay. It's just so the people at home can hear. So based on the conversation that uh, Gary and I had within his front yard, so this is his driveway in that location. Uh, there's a tree in this location and somewhere towards the property line. And he said he would be looking for six arbor, or uh, excuse me, eight arborvitaes to be placed between those trees. Um, once again, you know, uh, placing the hedge it, where it uh, may not be, they're, they're going to be smaller plants, I suppose. I'm not sure what level of screening they will take care of now. Um, but, but once again, I would be willing to speak with the applicant and I don't think it's uh, out, of, out of the ordinary for something to be asked like that. Yeah, I, I think typically when we, uh, when we have screening, we usually call for uh, hedges or arborvitae or something yep. up six feet tall. Okay. So I think that would be appropriate if Good there's no objections from the applicant. Okay, thank you. I would make a motion that... Uh, we find the application complete with the condition of uh, the IFNW approval. Uh, we should accept the we should accept the conditions of approval first, and then vote okay. on. Okay. Right. Yes. Well, I vote that we accept the. I'll make a motion that we accept the conditions of approval, which would be the IFNW approval and the hedge. Just for clarity, I don't think it's IFNW approval, no, right? I thought it was the Army Corps. Army Corps. Oh, it's Army Corps. Yeah. And Army Corps. It's both, Corps. Correct. So it's, it's uh, Army Corps of Engineer that we are waiting on a study based on IFNW comments. Yeah, so it's an Army Corps approval. Exactly. So we can probably just strike. IFNW is pretty it would be redundant, so it'd be Army Corps approval. I agree with that. All right, so I'll amend my motion. <laughs> Make a motion that. Uh, <clears throat> With the following amendments, uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineer uh, approval is required to move forward, and a second condition that uh, the applicant be willing to install a hedge uh, with the abutter who's requesting it responsible for the maintenance. And and so this gets in the notes that was six arborvitaes he was requesting. Right. Uh, I was yeah. eight. 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 Six okay. Foot tall as well. Correct. Just so we're clear on that, so yeah. that, you know, in a month we don't hear, oh, you only put in two, or I want a 30. That's fair. You know what I mean? Uh, fair assessment, sir. I do. I'll second <laughs> Phil's. Uh, okay, for the discussion. Roll call, Don? Yes. Paul? Yes. I'm a yes. I'm a yes. yes. Left? Yes. Rick? Les? Yes. Jerry? I am a yes. Okay. There go. Thanks for your time. Well, hold on. That's the conditions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the application. Approve the application. Yep. Yeah. Approve the final plan. Yep. So this is final approval? Yep. Yep. It's a minor subdivision, so. So okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the final plan for the project at hand. I will second said motion. 
Now, should you want to add pending with the uh, uh, approved findings? conditions? No, no, with the with the final findings of fact. Right, you want to add that to the approval? Okay. So I mean, you can approve the findings of fact. Yeah. 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 Nope. Okay. Oh yeah, we have them there. Yet. Okay. So yeah, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> We're doing that. Right. I'm not sure which order. I don't think it yeah. matters. You can no, approve I the know, application and the I findings. I that we actually had the findings. If we don't have the findings, we need to approve it pending, pending the, the findings. findings. Yeah. So it's just approval, regular approval. Which includes the findings of fact. Well, that's next. Okay. <laughs> We're going to vote on All that. All right, regular approval. Yeah. I will make a motion that the finding of facts are complete. Hold on. Oh, we got to do right. the we have to roll do call the vote. vote. Sorry, yeah. sir. Jump on the gun. So approval. Did we get a second? I'll we second. We did. All right. Further discussion? Second. Roll call, Don? Yes. Paul? Yes. I'm a yes. Bill? I am a yes. Rick? Yes. Les? Yes. Jerry? Yes. All right, so application is approved. Now on to the findings of facts. I will make a motion that we find the finding of facts complete and approve them. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? Roll call vote, Don? Yes. Paul? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? Yes. Rick? Yes. Les? Yes. Jerry? Yes, say yes. Again. All right, thank you. Findings of fact is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who gets the signature plans? Uh, just hand it to James. Good to go. Thanks for your time. For later. Oh, signature. Signature. I signature. Yeah, is that the one that needs to be signed? I was just signing now if you have the findings of fact, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah then we don't have to come into the office. Yeah, track yeah. It down. Don't feel hard. How many pages are there? There's two. Oh, my favorite. What's the date today? Five. Oh, we lost this in a second. Yeah. One stop shop. I know. I made a mistake one time of like holding it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta I know you leave them all in the Philippines. Start charging me for them. I'll, I'll start bringing them. Hey, <laughs>
Any more old business? Yes. yes. So moving along in old business, we have police, Berwick Police Department parking lot expansion U004-142-1 zone DC slash I. Is this uh, subject for approval now? Yep. Um, yeah. so yes. Yes. Looking for approval. Yep. Was there any conditions? The, con the only one condition we have on here so far is the project requires DEP approval before construction. Certificate of approval shall be submitted to the code enforcement officer. It's a minor uh, DEP stormwater revision, so it's similar to what the community garden had to do. So I expect the DEP permit to be back within within the month. Excellent. On the interest of supporting our public servants, I would like to make a motion that uh, we approve this project. I'd like to second that motion. Okay, further discussion? Roll call, Don? Yes. Paul? Yes. Yes. Phil? I am a yes. Rick? Yes. Les? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Right. Can I park a pen? Yeah, sure. Thanks, buddy. Next is for the findings Find of facts. Fact. Yeah. So we have a handful of backlog findings of facts you'll be seeing, so this is yeah. just one of those. Make a motion that we accept the finding of fact for this project. I'll second, second that motion. Oh. And done with <laughs> Further discussion? Okay, roll call, Don? Yes. Paul? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? I'm a yes. Rick? Yes. Les? Yes. Uh, Jerry? Yes. All right. Findings is accepted. All right, he left. Okay. So next is new business, findings of facts, approval, community garden, tax map U4, lot 142. So we already accepted the conditions, approved the conditions, and approved this applicant. The Correct. The thing we're doing now is just approving the yep. findings of facts. Yep. I will make a motion that we find the finding of facts complete for this project. I was second that. <laughs> okay, further discussion? <laughs> Roll call, Don? Yes. Paul? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? I am a yes. Rick? Yes. Les? Yes. Jerry? Yes. All right. Fractions of facts have been approved for the Berwick Community Garden. Next is a second public comment. I'd just like to make a couple comments. If, can I make a couple comments? In public comment or informational items? or out? As a town manager or as a citizen? Town manager. Yep. So one of the questions that was asked to the applicant that I want to clear up um, if anyone had a relationship with Mr. Patel. And um, that question was alluding to what my wife. Um, and I just want to, you know, in the effort of transparency, uh, my wife worked for a Patel for Trains Tavern. Uh, this applicant, Kevin Patel, uh, they're not related. So I know that rumor mill is, I don't know, it, it came from somewhere that there is some impropriety. impropriety. Um, second point, I, I just wanted to address um, one of the things that was brought up as a coincidence for the timing for the land use ordinance process. Pat and, and Jeremy, they, they came to the public hearing for the land use ordinances in February of 2023. That is when they started ringing the alarm bells in a public session saying, hey, we need to get something moving. I just want to point out 
as of July, July 20th, 2023, we still did not have our performance standards ready to go. There's just no, no way that we would have been ready for the June vote. It's not a coincidence. It's just the critical dates. I mean, the critical dates are set months, months before. So again, it took us a special meeting and to get things together, July 27th is when we finally got our stuff together to get it. There's no way it would have been ready for February. That's all. I, w I would like to, first of all, offer you a formal public apology. Thank you. Um, and I would just ask that you understand I'm very passionate about this town. I'm very passionate about the future of this town. I intend to live and die here. And uh, it was in that vein that, and, and you have to admit, it is a very unique coincidence, and I was ill-informed that there happens to be another Patel that owns a gas station. It was a unique series of events, and it was grossly inappropriate for me to bring it up in that form, and you have my sincerest apology. With regard to the second item, um, we did ask about amending those land use ordinances, and I did with my counterpart to my left, Mr. Amatucci, present before the select board in very short order and requested them to not forward that on without making the amendments. Um, I'm not sure why that fell on deaf ears, um, but we did not do our due diligence to protect our town and prevent a project of this magnitude. And the timing, uh, I'm sure it was just coincidental and, and that's fine if it was, but it, it put us in a very bad spot. And for our discussion that you and I had, um, by your own admission, there, there were some discrepancies with regard to when we heard the word and as we were trying to do our due diligence for the town. So, it, it does feel, from at least from my perspective, I'm going to speak for myself, not for my counterparts, but we are trying to do our due diligence to protect our town. And if we get word we have approved these ordinances and they're going through, and then we go before the select board and beg them, you can, you can watch the, the film and say, we, we've heard that this could be coming. Please consider, yes, we forwarded you our draft. Please consider amending it to prevent this, for lack of a better term, a really large project that, that won't be approved under the new land use ordinance. Our, our job is, is to serve the citizens, and, and I hear the citizens loud and clear. And I, I just, I feel like as a collective team, everybody in this building can do a better job. And, and I, think, I feel we really missed the mark on this one. And, if there was no gerrymandering, you have my sincerest apology, but I think a reasonable person could conclude that why, why wouldn't the select board take that for action? Why, well, why guys, would guys, it be under such one, a just, harsh timeline? Uh, yes, sir. 15 Sorry. seconds. So we didn't have anything. We had in February of 2023, we had no standards. We, it took until like right after we started working on them. Hold on, I'm gonna add something to that. <clears throat> February, what was it, 15th or 14th? We had a deadline set for stuff to go on. The the day the day of the the day of the public hearing was the day the ordinances were due. So and I had already sometimes I can talk with the town clerk and be like, we're gonna be a little bit late. Hey, is it okay? You hold the public hearing thurs Thursday and then you make the last changes and it's already it's already late. It's already due. But we can make those changes that Thursday to be ready for that Monday, get everything together and be ready for that select board meeting on Tuesday. They, they came to that public hearing that Thursday. The, we would have had to write all these performance standards by that and have it ready for that Tuesday. Again, we, we had it on our agenda for weeks and Lee J was working on it, I was working on it, Iris contributed. We, we barely got it to the finish line July 27th. Like we, like we had to hold that special meeting between the groups, the boards and things, you know. But we also, but also we got the performance standards and 
the design standards and those are i mean those design st standards we have for our corridors that's going to be really helpful for future for, for shaping our future so i guess i would just ask in the future um i feel like we all do our our best to again support the desire of the people of this town and and i feel at least from my perspective there was a blatant lack of transparency with what was known at, at much higher levels above the planning board and and to me personally it, it felt a little bit like a setup and and it and it felt disingenuous if it wasn't meant to be that way so be it but it i mean what other conclusion would a reasonable person come to you, you know well any developer they do a lot of stuff before it gets to the planning board the yeah, engineers I mean, engineers look at land. They they buy land. I mean, and I, there's a lot of steps that we don't see before it comes to the planning board. And I hear I hear about, like you hear about intentions and, and things like that. I don't want to go back to that semantics thing because that's we've we've been there. But just like we look, looked at it today, like the Patels purchased that property in December of 2022, um, and. I, I heard about it from uh, a property owner on uh, who, who's on that corridor. It just kind of like, hey, there's you know, there's this rumored gas station, right? And then it's it it is like, yeah, it, you have all kind. There's all kinds of ideas and things like that. So at some point, maybe it was lost. It was lost in communication where it became this um, unnecessarily, I guess non-transparent thing that yes it's coming and no it's not coming I, I i think the meaning was it's we hear about it but truly from for me it is true that unless you have an application in front of you there's really nothing to review and i mean you know, i would like to speak i'm nope. not allowed nope but you know nope so i i guess it just if, if and, and I know I brought this up in an email earlier, but if, if anybody who's employed by this town knew about it beforehand, why would it? Why would we not take a more proactive approach as opposed to a reactive approach? It never crossed my mind that it would be it would be a big issue. So it's really how could, hard. To, how it's, could it not cross your mind? It's really it's hard to predict right? what would what what becomes controversial or what you know what's a. I mean, I'm sure we could. You could look at all the past approvals and see industrial uses. You could see um, there's all kinds of past uses that weren't, didn't rise to the, you know, because I missed, you know, personally, I would, I did not predict that it was going to be a significant, as significant of an issue. Otherwise, yeah. I, I think, I think, you know, I'd like to just say something, you know, there's a couple of things since I've been on the planning board that, you know, I've seen some big strides made in organization and keeping track of things and actually setting deadlines and putting things in place that, that this town lacked for a long time. And I think that what I saw when I came on here was a little bit of that, that, you know, things, yeah, let's do it. Let's take care of it. Next meeting, let's take care of it. Next meeting, let's take care of it. You know, we didn't have, you know, Terry does a great job. Uh, James was a great planet. Terry does a great job holding our feet to the fire and saying these are the deadlines. And I think that that's why it got on that the meet, the the ballot that it did get on. You know, um, from from my opinion, you know, I, I watch this thing and I I agree with James. And there's, there's something that's worth pointing out too is that you know uh, this is a contentious project by a very small group of people. When you put it in perspective, you know when eight people come to the meeting and be heard that's a lot of people in the meeting but there's a small percentage of Berwick and so you know what I think I agree with James I wouldn't have suspected that there would be this many people adamantly opposed to a gas station on a state highway that has other big businesses that match that scale and scope of business I never would have thought that people would contest that I Look at that, and I see all the other businesses there, and I'm like, what a perfect fit for that location. And, you know, and then the other thing that was brought up, and I don't know about this because I haven't really looked at this project to the new land use ordinance, would it not meet the new land use ordinance? 
size it is of grossly building. oversized. Yeah, it's not grossly. They Compared they approved a pretty big size gas it's station. More than double. Yeah, so more the more than double. the small the si well, if you remember, you guys you guys did approve up to five thousand square feet with with planning. That's what approval. I heard. Up to five thousand. So the building square is seventy five hundred square feet. So, so is the building larger? Yes. It's not a bigger gas station than, than we had envisioned when we wrote that ordinance. It's four gas pumps. We approved twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred square feet at the planning board and passed it on to the selectmen, the selectmen raised it to 5,000. No, not true, not true, no, no, you got, no. No, it was up to no. 5,000. You guys had the discussion and it was up to. Um, because I actually studied gas stations a little bit. I went, I looked at the gas station at Cumberland Farms here, it is uh, 2,400 square feet, I believe. The gas station across from Key Auto Group in Summersworth is 5,200 square feet. So I went and actually looked at gas stations and actually got my wheel out and measured them because a lot of times, in my experience, what happens is you think 5,000 square feet and you think that's a massive building. And it's not necessarily a small building, but what is, you know, what is 5,000 square feet? So for me, I actually went to these gas stations and looked at buildings and said, you know, Cumberland Farms and Borough is an extremely small and in, in fact, it's on the smaller side of what Cumberland Farms will build. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't build them very much smaller than that unless they absolutely have to. So, you know, two to five thousand square feet seems to be the norm for a gas station of that type. So seventy five hundred square feet is a little bit larger than the norm. But it also you know, it's not larger than Hannaford's yeah, on that road. Dice arts. And and you know, really I'm looking at this and I was expecting you know, eight or ten pumps. There's more pumps at the at the Cumberland Farms in Berwick than there will be at Mr. Patel's place. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's twice as many. So to me, it's more of a it's more of a can you know a market that sells gas. I think and we just, need to be just careful because yeah, we shouldn't sorry. talk. I think I think this is good and, and healthy to talk about process. We always can improve uh, like improve upon the process and yes. yeah, all for transparency and hope that yeah. I mean, this, we're on the same team. So I think I think hopefully, well, I guess my point of that long-winded point was that you know hopefully we're on a better track of these things don't fall through the cracks, Phil, and that we can. Yeah. You know, when when we say we're going to do something by you know this meeting or by this date, you know, I, we, we I use this as a that, commercial that we're going through you know comprehensive planning and you know a lot of that is future land use. So we have a lot of data and information, but now we need to formulate that plan. And I mean, that's what comprehensive planning is about: is being proactive. But but we are reactive, and that and therein lies the problem. So I, I, how do we? as writ large that this everybody who works here doing this how you, do we get proactive because you, we are we are operating reaction because you, you create the you do the comprehensive plan you create the comprehensive plan it shows the vision of where we want to be in 10 20 years mm -hmm. and your ordinance becomes a mirror reflection of your comp plan so basically you create your plan your vision and then you can you if we so choose can rewrite our ordinances from the ground up based on our comprehensive plan that's that's how we stop being so, yeah i think so, i think one of the things too is that you know uh when these things come up that's why we're reactionary because they're not in the land use zone. and so we realize that when somebody makes an application or when there's a rumor that there's going to be a gas station i i never would have thought there wasn't land use ordinances for a gas station in the land use ordinance okay. I mean, uh, there wasn't performance standards for it when remember the farms came in also well, and, and i'll go you know, back as far as that and and i know we're, we're running thin on time, but when we had uh, our friend, Ms. Robosca, who was helping us draft those, um, it, you know, we asked the, the question point blank in that meeting, why are there no performance standards for gas station? And we got deer in the headlights from, from her. And, and not, to her, not that that's any of her fault. It's not, her, we, it's not her job. I mean, she's, right, she's a stormwater but, engineer. But we are trying to be proactive in, in our approach. And when you bring in an expert via video teleconference and we're like, She's like, okay, here's your land use ordinance, and this is, you know, how we do the water stuff. She's our stormwater engineer. Understood. She and, doesn't have anything to do with land use. She's our stormwater consultant. A petroleum company is going to directly affect stormwater and the groundwater, and, and I think it's definitely in her wheelhouse, and we did ask that question. So it, 
I just I, I want to make sure we're be... clear that on the timeline okay. and when things were asked, sir. Yeah, there just would have been no. I mean, I don't think Christy would have had any idea that. I, I recall the was... video very well, and she was like, "Well, that's an interesting question," <clears throat> and then it never went anywhere. So I just, I, I just want to make sure, it, you know, the public has confidence in our ability to try to instill checkpoints on on projects of this magnitude, so that we don't get steamrolled because people want to come in and exploit loopholes in our in our policy. <clears throat> can I can I make a quick quick comment that's related but not related no. um, to this? Um, it's in relation to the site walk situation that happened with this project. Um, it was stated that there was concern that the site walk was videotaped, which is not normal. And it was brought up that site walks have been videotaped in the past when they are contentious, so it is normal. I went back and looked at every single Berwick Community Media video going back to 2018, 19, and there have only ever been two other site walks listed on their website that were videotaped. Both of them in April of 2020. One was for the funeral home on Cemetery Road, which had zero uh, public hearing participants, so I don't think that was contentious and then one for 11 Pond Road, which was a marijuana growing facility, which was a pretty big topic at that time. Um, and then finally, the site walk for the Patel gas station that was videotaped is not available on Borough Community Media. Isn't it? It is not. Isn't it, par isn't it part of, I thought the site walk is part of, there's an edited planning board meeting there's it a, is not available on it's, any video for Berwick Community Media. I think media. if you go to the meeting date, I think it's in there. I'm pretty sure it's there. I'll, have to, I'll double check. And the funeral home on Cemetery Road was very contentious mm -hmm. because of the way that property was acquired for the for the cemetery. I happen to know about that. Yeah. That, that was before I was on the planning board. But I was on the planning board then. I remember that. It was because they because they gave the property yeah. to like the best use versus the highest. So I guess my so. point is there were only two other videotaped site walks, and it, it appeared as though the the argument was that it happens all the time, and it just does not. Well, it happens on very contentious. Yeah, and four years projects. Ago, it, said. There have been other projects since then. I'm sure that were contentious. It that was Linda from BCM that she wanted to videotape it, just so if there was people that couldn't make it, they could see it. And that was what is the big deal with that you know phil keeps well, saying that we're not transparent and we videotaped a site walk but how much more transparent do you get than that i mean more transparency or no well the, i understand your point but to your point that video um was used to one call a board member out for actually talking to a crippled abutter who could not attend the site walk and that member got chastised for talking to somebody who could not participate in the site walk and that individual from our board went over to say, hey, there's a public hearing, are you aware, did you get your abutters notice? Um, also from that video, another one of our esteemed members was asked to recuse himself um, for comments that were caught on the video and, and likely taken out of context. So the... So that's pretty pretty good transparency right there. Yeah, it, it is. But what's the purpose of the, the video to uh, put a stranglehold on people on the board uh, or to provide holding you accountable, accountable yeah. Holding you accountable is not putting a stranglehold. I mean, if, if you're going to talk out of turn, yeah. and you shouldn't be say, on the planning board. Who's to say if someone walks out and talks to, talks to someone outside of the meeting, we don't know what was... Also, those two aren't related, too. I they're mean, not. I know they're not related. They're, yeah. not. they're not related. Yeah. Those two aren't related. I mean... At the end of the day, you know, we're, we're not infallible. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing caught on. It's, those are, it's just an odd series of coincidences. There's a, there's a lot of coincidences with this project, a, a lot. <laughs> but you admit that some of your coincidences were, were coinc false. coincidences. And, and the, two, the two that I said were false, that means that there are at least five you still or six think others you, that are you not. Still, all right, I'll, but you, I'll just, I'll stop. I just, you still think the land use ordinance thing is a coincidence? I just don't see how you can see it as a coincidence because of the timing of things. Maybe if you think that we should have been working on things in the winter time leading up to it. Yeah, but I mean, let's 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 do it. I mean, I'm 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 all for it. I'm you didn't even know about it at the earliest until December, right? 
I don't, I don't, I. That's when he bought the property, so you couldn't have known about it before. I can go back and see if I have anything in, I think so. I, I, I didn't. I mean, I, I think until, this, I've seen over the years, I've lived here for a long time, you know, I've seen that, you know, things move slowly in the town. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that we're getting better about it. And I think we've made some incredible leaps and bounds about getting better organization and staying on track with things like that you know i think that it's a it's an ongoing thing you know it's for a, me one of one of the issues uh was on that on that issue of you know when we started looking at it to to get the land use ordinance done was um the applicant was walking around town saying i'm going to do this i just bought that land and i'm going to do this and it was pretty common knowledge. Uh, I got it from a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, like seven, eight different people who told me, oh, I hear there's gonna be this big gas station and convenience store on Route 4. So the applicant was, uh, was out there doing this, um, which um, was bothersome because the applicant um, uh, I'm not going to say anymore, uh, but I, I just think that sometimes the applicant doesn't do themselves any favors here. But the fact was that it was there was there was knowledge in planning and uh, here that this was going to happen, and they were asked point blank, "Is there going to be?" A gas and convenience store and the answer was we have no such knowledge <laughs> when the truth was that there was such knowledge yes it was anecdotal and it was uh, somebody here uh, as an applicant talking about what they potentially wanted to do with the land so uh, I feel we were lied to you know all you had to do is say yes there's somebody talking about that but there's no application yet, and that's all we wanted to know. But I hope you know, like, if you ask me, I'm going to tell, I'll tell you exactly what I know. I mean. Right. It wasn't you. It wasn't you. I just hope, I mean, I'm an open book here. I have nothing to hide. I love Berwick. I'm here for Berwick. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Just, no, uh, and it wasn't you, but. We, uh, it was, it was. It was, it was asked, and I, I was told by the person who had had that conversation. Uh, I, I know for a fact. And and said, no, I don't know of no such uh, thing that's going to happen. Yeah, we unnecessarily made it more complicated than it had to be. And those are the kinds of things that hurt credibility. Sure. So. And, and they affect public trust. I mean, we we work for the public. We're we're held in an esteemed position of public trust and. When things like this happen, it, it, it kind of puts us in a very difficult spot where, again, we, we end up being reactive instead of proactive. So I have a question. Where are we at with our comprehensive plan? We, 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 I won't lie, we've been in, we've been slugging it along. Um, a lot of the, inv the inventory piece is in, a lot of the chapters are developed. We have a lot of goals, policies, and strategies, which, which is a lot of the meat of the, of the plan. We have some work to do. Um, we, need to get, we need to get on it. Um, you know, optimistically, you could have something by June 2025, you know, that if, if we get back on the ball. Um, we have a staff now actually from SMPDC, uh, Michaela. She's been helping us with our open space planning which I suggest you guys get involved or, you know, review that material. She's been knocking out of the park, excellent, like really helping and supporting the group move it forward. So now she's gonna be getting on board with the comprehensive planning. Um, so yeah, the, the plan, uh, I'd be happy to share it so you can review some of the chapters and yeah, and participate in whatever way, whatever capacity. And I can even bring reports here, and we can put it on some of the agenda for future land use. Would it, would it be appropriate, and I think, again, it, it lends itself to being proactive, is, is there any way we could embrace technology, <laughs> create a town SharePoint for the board members 
where we can go in and review those documents Absolutely. ahead of time. And, and then we've asked this question yeah. before, and it hasn't happened. But let's let's commit to that. Let's commit. They're already on a SharePoint. So okay. The chapters are all in the SharePoint. Be yeah, okay. Be happy if you guys get on there, start adding comments and editing. I'll be wouldn't be couldn't be any happier if that were to happen. So and Ryan, is this is the first time we're hearing about our the SharePoint and our. Oh, I've been talking you about want, conference and plan our, for you years. Want our input. It's I've been just, I've been talking about conference and plan Google, for okay. for years. There's a Google uh, Drive that we're all a part of, isn't okay. it? I th this is a particular. Uh, I mean, I, I've been or talking Google about document, isn't there? Like, as I I know I've gotten the email for that. Yeah, it's it's that, that's the share. It has been yeah yep. the SharePoint. Yep. It has been sent. That was like two months ago. Huh. But I'll be happy to... If you could forward that along, it would be sure. used to us. I, yeah. I think if we could get a read-ahead before yeah. we were just, sitting here and, just and looking at the clock. It, you know. it was sent to all planning board members. It was like two months ago. Well, I, yeah. I'll, I'll look. Maybe it was just you. I mean, I don't, I'm pretty sure it was sent to everyone. Okay. One of the... Which is actually tied to the land use ordinance stuff. So we'll move, yeah, we'll move to that, yeah. So that's it for public comment. Informational items. No more. I think we kind of already. No more information. All right, next is land use <laughs> ordinance amendments. We have one from Beth Marshall. Um, she says, hello, we are writing to inquire about getting our house into the district overlay. Our address is 10 Maple Lodge Street on downtown, in downtown Berwick. We hope that this can make it onto the May vote. Thank you for the consideration and all you, all you do. You do sincerely, Philip and Beth Marshall. That's dated April second, twenty twenty four. So I'm aware of not only Beth, but there's Kevin is also a Maple Lodge, and also the Weber Funeral Home is interested. So you're potentially looking at a whole corridor there that's interested in joining the village Are overlay? All abutting as it is I think right it, I think it would be all contiguous, yeah. What is the uh, what is the purpose of adding them to the overlay district? With the village overlay district the, uh, the standards are different for a building. Yeah. So it's, density. Yeah. Because one of the things that I have been meaning to uh, suggest as a land use ordinance is to adopt something in in the R1 district and potentially R2 where wherever we have town water and sewer like North Borough has a, a village C overlay district which allows for um, you know if you have a 10,000 square foot lot currently in R1 you can put one house on it the challenge with that is that pushes development outside of the downtown lots that only have 10,000 square feet or 15 or 20,000. But the North Berwick ordinance allows for 2,500 square feet per unit in a multifamily building. So on that same 10,000 square foot lot, potentially you could put a four unit building. And I think that makes a lot of sense because, you know, we've talked a lot about wanting to direct the density, the high density developments into the downtown area and that's you know that's a great way to do it i mean you know 10,000 square feet in a downtown scenario per unit means for a six unit building you need an acre and a half and that's you're just not gonna you're just not gonna find that in downtown so i i would i would suggest something like that i mean i know james and i have had conversations about you know transfer of development rights and things like that which i think are great but it's an example of one of the things that you know we talked about and then we get busy and we're on down the road so it's you know so now we're talking about it again two months later um but i, I can i can try to draft something up or i can work with irish uh or terry to try and draft up something and basically just put an extra from north berwick's land use ordinance so you guys can you know take a look at it and see yeah we just need and, to kind of figure out where we're trying to go with it, you know, because we have the village overlay, we have the R1 right around that. Like, how far of a zone are we looking? You, you know, know, I mean, personally, I, I also know, like, I agree with you that we're not trying to promote outskirts growth, we're trying to promote in, but right, with right. our density requirements, it's very hard, it's very hard to allow that to happen. So, mm -hmm. I mean, but doesn't that serve? the 
desires of the people that we serve because everybody that comes before the board with regard with exception of developers everybody I talk to is like we should be limiting growth and if that policy lim limits growth and, and density I, why, why would we I think if you look at it like we want to we want to basically the way that it works in my head I think and this is why you do a comprehensive plan you want to increase development in your your urban areas mm -hmm. But at the same time, proportionally start putting in smart regulations in your, your rural areas. So there's a ton of thought that's going in for open space planning. With every new bedroom that comes in, we take in impact fees and we can go out and purchase open space. That's just one example. Another example is keeping farmland and active farmland. There's a ton of stra strategies and through the open space planning, we're working on developing that tool toolbox that works for the town of Berwick. So when it comes to, when it comes to growth on our historical trajectory, we're nowhere, we're, nowhere, we're nowhere close to where we've been. You look at our school population, we have less kids in the school system now than 1989. So there's challenges and if we have growth in our urban areas where we're already snow plowing, we're already taking care of those roads. Already have water and sewer. Already have water and sewer. It just becomes more profitable and less expensive per person. And I mean, that that's basic, you know, city development is, you know, you kind of look at a city like a wagon wheel and in the center in that hub, right, the, the spokes are right up against each other. Mm -hmm. And as you get further out into R2 and R3, you want the spokes further out. And that, you know, that's one of the things like Jeremy talks about all the time is preserving some of this farmland um, and you know that's one way to do it you know the, the transfer of development rights was really an interesting way as well but you know um, a lot of towns have that that change in density for multifamily housing because you know if you look around I mean some of these some of these neighborhoods here have multifamily housing but it's not very well thought out or designed it was a farmhouse that got converted or whatever and you know those, those properties you know they could become you know newer modern updated and the, apartment buildings and the type of housing we probably want to encourage is a lot of duplexes or triplexes and quadplexes it's it's the, known as the missing middle housing where you either have single family houses or you have you know less as developments and less is development still on the I'm scale done. of things aren't gigantic but yeah if we can encourage more in the in our urban areas the duplexes the triplexes it just creates that um diversity of housing stock that's right and i mean you know you look at the tannery site as an example you look at the two apartment buildings that they're building you know those those fit in that location and again as you get away from that hub you want a little bit more density so the units that you're talking about the two and three family and four family units um you know i mean i grew up in the city so that's you know where i lived it was three four six unit buildings six unit buildings were about the biggest and, and i don't it, that's great but when you listen to the people of our town they don't they don't want city living they they want a country feel and i and i think that's but, important to note and Number listen to okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. The number actually, the number one thing is ta is property taxes. Mm -hmm. So, be, be beyond anything, it's tackling this issue of that Berwick has always skewed high property taxes because we've um struggled with our tax base. So, we should that is the number one. I mean, yes, and and again, the comprehensive. So, we should be protecting our, our rural character as well. But growth, so, so is, I growth just make, is part of that. Some some smart growth is part of that equation. You I just make a big comment about that, you know, because you made a comment earlier about we work for the community and we do not work for the community. We're members of the community and we're representatives of the community. And, you know, so we're not the ruling party here. And, uh, you know, we propose land use ordinance. They go to the voters and the voters speak. Correct. So again, it goes to that, you know, one or two people come up and say, you know, we're growing too fast. And it seems like we're growing too fast. I admit that. But as James pointed out, the statistics and the data does not support that in any way, shape or form. So we're not on a crash course or a trajectory that's leading to a bad place. So my opinion is, you know, we recommend a land use ordinance change that makes sense to us. We put it to the voters. They say yes or they say no, just like with the gas station. The, ga the gas station, those ordinances were overwhelmingly approved. 
So, you know, to say the people of Berwick, I let them vote on it. Can I ask a question about uh, just getting back to uh, this uh, this letter from uh, Philip and Beth Marshall? You know, they're asking to be included in the village overlay, and uh, uh, are they are they out of it by some sort of you know line shift or something? And and really, they're abutting it right now. It, the it, only way that they can get added into it is if their land touches it already. So okay, and they're just just they're off just, it. Yeah, they're just off it. So they're like a zoning are, are they going to be off it, and then all well, of a sudden what, what's we go like this, is, and they're in it? Is, well, is, what's happening is every happened. year we get about two or three people that come in and say they want it. Yeah, I know. And I know. every year we've been putting them in for the vote, and okay. they get voted in. I think at some point we're going to want to have an upper limit where we go, this is the upper limit, right. and then we go to R1. Or this is the defined line, and if you're on the other side, we're not even put it in for the vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just, it's really a hard, we, so when we put it's not that. not that I don't want it, I'm just wondering if we just keep Where going. Yeah. Well, we put it, when, you know, when it was like, put in, it was put in as like, like an opt-in type of concept, yeah. which like zoning changes are actually pretty hard to, to do. Um, your neighbor did it, but like yes. it is not an easy thing to request and do, no. but we just kind of been an opt-in thing. But yeah, having like an upper limit of saying, and that's part of comprehensive planning. It's like this is this is it, and then it goes to R one. Right, right. But like, what some people want to opt into the village overlay, they simply want to turn their big house into a duplex, and they can't. Right. Got it. And that you know, and that speaks to you know when you say people don't want this, the people right here that want that, that village overlay is greater than the proposed uh, land use ordinance I suggested. Because I think in the village district, if it fits, you can build it, right? Yeah. With some. It, there's higher I mean, standards for the village of Design the standards. Well. Yeah, the design standards. But yeah, there's de density requirements are waived, which is pretty big. So that, I mean, that's even more, you know, you have a 10,000 square foot lot. Theoretically, you can build a 10,000 square foot footprint mm -hmm. and right. uh, three stories. We build a thirty thousand square foot building on that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, I just, I just throw that out there because I think that it's, for me it's important to always remember that you know we're representatives, you know, we're part members of the community, we're representatives here, and you know we put it in front of the voters. The voters vote for it or they don't, you know, versus sit here and say this is what they want, this is what they don't want. Well, it ultimately goes to their vote. I just, I, I guess, when I say that, it is, I, I feel like most everybody on the board is in tune with public comment, whether it's, you know, lurking on, <laughs> you know, the nefarious gossip pages or, or even just talking to people in town. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of information to be had out there. And, and I think that there's a large percentage of people who are voicing their concerns about, about the growth of the town. And, and I hear sure. it loud and clear. Yeah, no question. And I think we, as a board, should take that advice and those recommendations to heart when we when we draft these ordinances and these changes. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's nuanced for sure. I get it. What's that? It's just a nuance. It's nuanced. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, at the end of the day, you know, that you, you you speak to a certain James group of people. on this, uh, for instance, I do, the Marshall's he does, he does. letter. I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, is it up to us to? Uh, to vote on this, whether we want want them to be placed on the ballot or not. This is something we can possibly put a, a pit in, and I can get, can get more information. Yeah. Um, the plan was not to have a town ballot for the November ballot. Mm -hmm. Just to let it be just presidential. Okay. So I'm not sure what that does. With, I'd have to check with them um, and see and see because I, I'm not sure. If they could kind of force their way on to making us do a ballot, or if we can just say, "Yeah, you can vote on it," and then it'll be on the ballot for June 2025. Right. right. So you're going to check into this for us. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Would there be any value? Um, it, it see, the discussion has kind of lent itself to that. This comes up every so often. People want to add them themselves to that area. Would it would it be reasonable for us to come up with a checklist? Or, or a list of requirements that says, hey, if you want to do this, 
um, rather than just, you know, okay, hey, email, you know, I want to do this, put some requirements in that say if you meet requirements X, Y, and Z, you, you can request that. If you don't meet those requirements, it's null and void, and you're, you're kind of stuck where you're at. And that, and that, it lends itself to still allowing it, but at the same time, it, it's more of a formal process as opposed to just, I want to email and, you know, I'm close and I want to get that. It, should we come up with a, a bona fide checklist that says A, B, and C, and if you meet these requirements, then yes, we'll consider it. I can look into that because it is a, it's a zoning request. So there's probably a better process that, like I said, we, when this was put into place, we kind of thought of this as an opt-in because when it went to the Village Overlay District, it was a big step and we didn't want to upset people by saying hey you're you're in this thing you're in this new thing now mm -hmm. so then or you're close to it yeah tough so. luck and a lot of it missed is, it by that much well and, <laughs> and new people that come and buy a property they don't realize what they're in and then all of a sudden they realize that they're right next to it but they want to be part of it so i mean mm -hmm. if we set deadlines or something like that it's it like how James says, it's always been an opt-in thing. They just have to be abutting it. That's how it's been since I've been on the board. Yeah, I think at a certain point we draw a thick, thick black line around it. We go, that's the zone. And then I think making the drop off from Village Overlay to R1 shouldn't be so stark. Mm -hmm. Like you probably should be able to do a duplex. Something, right? Yeah. Something a little different than, so we can, than we have. And that's, that's all part of, you know, future land use and plugging away at the land use ordinance. But again, just reemphasizing the way that I see it and I think we can accomplish it is if we're encouraging more growth downtown, I think there's a way to proportionally look at ways of, you know, of balancing it that way when, you know, we're not spiking the, the population or the dwelling units. And it's, you know. Well, I, th I think too that, you know, one of the limiting factors will continue to be you know, in the R1 zone where there's not a lot of land available. Mm -hmm. So that means somebody would have to buy a house and tear it down to build a four unit building and the prices of housing, you know, so, so that's gonna limit it as well. But I think that the people that will benefit are the people like uh, this couple here that sent in, if their house all of a sudden gets zoned where they can make it a duplex so they can add a, you know, another unit and help with their, help with their mortgage. You know, I think that that's, that will be the big benefit. More so than I mean, you know. You so maybe one of the one of the factors in the questionnaire that Phil was talking about would be, what is the purpose to you for getting rezoned? You know, what do you plan to do with the property? I mean, do you want do you want to make? I don't know what would a, you do with that information though. I mean, you, well, is it really our business? Real estate prospecting. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but is that really our business? I mean, no. You know, if somebody somebody's property, they want to do what they want with it. I mean. <clears throat> I don't know, we, we had one, it was two or three years ago, where somebody wanted to get zoned differently where they were, and I think it was in the village area, and uh, kept saying, I promise I'm not going to put in a McDonald's. I promise I'm not going <laughs> to oh, put in Oh, they wanted McDonald's. the Jersey Mike's. Yeah, that's, that's what, that's what they right wanted. Next, yeah. Somewhere near Amato's. Amato's. Yeah. Amato's. Yeah. Amato's. yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, re it was, uh, Reading. Yeah. Oh, it was you put in the um, small engine split. Yeah. So that I mean that was one example. They, they he was ad adopted into it, and then he was able to add a commercial um, unit to his property mm -hmm. under mixed use. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if it's an allowed use in that zone, it's an allowed use in that zone. I mean, who are we to, you know, that's that's not how it goes. I mean, our, our job is to determine if it meets that land use ordinance. Well, we were pumped about mottos, but <laughs> <laughs> and we need a Popeyes. What we need. I'll hear that. <laughs> All right, next. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for a land use ordinance amendments. Um, so next is just the adjournment. Well, what about what about this one from Mr. Patel? Oh. Yeah, that, yeah you're right. That's not right. Is that yeah. land? That's, yeah. that's land use ordinance. My bad. So. We got a letter from Kevin Patel. He says, hello, my name is Kevin Patel, owner of Stop and Go Berwick, the proposed gas station route for Reason for this email is to grant permission for the gas price sign to be internally lit. We respect town ordinance and not going to ask much about this internally lit sign, but as a business owner, I think it makes sense to all the, all that at list gas price digits 
can be internally lit. As we all know, the gas prices change every day and sometimes twice a day, which makes difficult for us to change price sign if it's not digital. It's not easy to change prices manually using ladder every time, and you understand risk of using ladder twice a day, changing price, and not every employee capable of doing that kind of work, so it's hard to manage. Um, question, Mike. Yep. What, what do we have over here at uh, Cumberland Farms? Isn't that digital? They're grandfathered in. Yeah. Oh, they're grandfathered yeah. in. Okay. So and on this, Route 4, is a new there's, <laughs> yes, it is a new ordinance. There's yeah. at least two storage facilities that have um, lit signs. Internally, internally lit, lit yeah. signs. And the ATM. And the ATM. Yeah. Um, my question. Because is that what he's talking about? Or is he talking about like the digital signs? That's what he's talking about. Sounds like he's talking about the digital signs, right? Right. right. You can just like LEDs. Numbers. Yeah, like the LED signs, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Route 4 is a residential, commercial, industrial area. So, I mean, that's open to discussion. Um, Would it be a reasonable compromise? I think the intent of the sign ordinance, and I'm, I'm speculating, but I think the intent of that ordinance was we don't want to have large internally lit signs, like a huge white Because of light sign. pollution. Yeah. So would it be a reasonable accommodation to say you have a sign that is naturally lit externally, but you're allowed to have your digital numbers that you can change? And I think that's a reasonable compromise. It meets the current sign ordinance, and it addresses his issue for the difficulty. I guess the only question about that is do they work like that? Like. You know, with the light shining on the lights. Well, you can make a sign that says that the store is here and have that externally lit, and then you right. just have a gas price. Your gas price digital sign. I, I don't think that is so incredibly intrusive that it would. Uh, no, I can't imagine that causing much light. Right. Light right. But you look at like the Cumby sign right here down the road. They, you know, they have their digital numbers, which are red, which aren't going to project very far anyway. Red light, you know, short bandwidth, but. The large white sign over it, I think, is what is the most egregious, which is why the people voted for the sign ordinance. So let's give him the opportunity to, okay, your signage cannot be internally lit, but you are allowed to have your digital numbers for your gas prices that you can control by a computer not to exceed and give them a reasonable size. I, th I think that I would make a motion, if, if that's what we're looking for, that that is a reasonable accommodation. Well, so this is for a land use ordinance change, so this wouldn't even happen until... Yeah, we're going to add it to the... I, I'm working on a working document already, so we can, we can put these on the list, and then once it's time, uh, so June 2025, I mean, we should be work, working at the, you know, winter... You know, by November, I mean, really October, we can start gearing up, gearing yeah. up for June 2025. Is that but something we could make an exception for for the digital, digitally lit numbers? So, no. no, we couldn't waive it. As, as the land use ordinance is written now, we couldn't waive it because it's a performance standard. Yeah. Yep. But so as it stands, he he cannot do that currently. Right. Oh, right. Right. Items for discussion from the esteemed Burgess meeting room, the depths of the Berwick Town Hall beneath the clock tower. I make a motion that we adjourn. I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night.